Thanks, Lauren. Okay, I think good morning, Aaron, Jeff, Punsheng, Marvin, uh, and all the visionary business leaders who are watching our sharing session today. Um, I'm Vincent uh, from Exabytes. I think uh, we are really glad to have four successful business leaders uh, with us here today. I think like what Lauren said, the title of this session would be Evolving Retail Business, Small Moves, Smartly Made. It has been really, really a challenging year and it will be more challenging moving forward. But it's always the right time for us to make small and smart moves to evolve our retail businesses. I think uh, I've heard uh, BC uh, from ICKIC today, Wai Hong and also Aaron, uh, they have actually highlighted that uh, one of the effective ways to adopt the new retail business model is to leverage on the omni-channel solutions. Well, you guys don't mind, a quick warm up, all right? Please type one in the comment section if you know and have started to adopt the omni-channel solution. And you can type two if you are here today to learn more about um, omni-channel from all the seafoods we have here today. Yep. If I myself, right, I would say I will be one and two because I, I know already, but I wish to learn more, right? Wow, there's all of them are two. Okay, one and two, 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 two. Cool, cool. I think you guys are here right today. I think uh, regardless you are one or two, but I can assure you that you will gain really a lot throughout the session. Feel free to share your thoughts and questions, if you have any, in the comment section, and we'll try our best to bring them up onto this discussion. Right. Cool. Thank you for being so responsive, guys. Cool. Okay, to kickstart this discussion, I would like to invite Marvin from 91APP to share with us more about Omnichannel and what makes a retail business in Malaysia to succeed by adopting Omnichannel solution. Over to you, Marvin. Marvin, you have muted. Uh, thanks, Vincent. And uh, I think I think we have a great session uh, previously with Wei Hong, uh, and he also introduced a little bit about uh, the Omni channels. So what I'm I'm going to brief here is more like uh, Omni channels uh, is 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 like a multi-channel sales approach uh, for, 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 for 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 you guys, and then that actually provides you a customer with an integrated customer experience which is mean like it's all about uh, to create a seamless and better user customer purchase journey through online and offline. So this is uh, uh, what I can comment from uh, what is an open channel is. And regarding to the segment questions of how actually uh, Malaysia's uh, business can grow with these only channels, what I would say is uh, more like a uh, our, our, our business are uh, actually from uh, what we engage so far, they actually are looking for a, a, a perfect and ultimate one-shot solutions. But the fact is uh, uh, to be able to go to only channels or uh, 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 reaching to the only channel, actually it needs phases uh, to implement phase by phase until you reach out uh, uh, to the to the to the goal. For instance, like what we have heard from Wei Hong and a couple of uh, audience also have asking questions: What is the difference between the marketplace and uh, uh, whether I should do uh, the only channel now or whatsoever? So there are phases. Like if you are not like you if you're just starting, maybe a marketplace is a good place for you to uh, outreach uh, for more audience. But at last, you will go uh, your customer will be your, uh, your, your, your core and key that you can serve and retain your, your, your customer. So uh, that's more like uh, what I'd like to share. So uh, in uh, business in Malaysia, I also recommend that uh, if you are SME, uh, I think it's, it's about time for you to start constructing how to leverage uh, the traffic from offline to online. So this is something I think is the first step that uh, 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 participants can start thinking about the questions, these questions. So, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Couldn't agree more on that. I think you're right. I think just like you were saying that, you know, the core about this omni-channel and also this new retail will be customer-centric, you know. Businesses have to really start taking small steps in improving customer experience like really across online and offline, but it's like what you say, it will be from, it will be face by face, right? Right, I would like to do another quick survey, guys, with all the business leaders here today. 
if you are running a business with both online and offline or retail stores, please type one. If you have both online and offline. If you are running your online business without retail yet, please type two. Yep. One, if you have business online and offline together, but two, if you're only having online but not retail yet. Well, okay. I see a quite a healthy mixture of um, yeah, online and offline, one and two, one and two. Cool. I think um, yeah, I think uh I can see really a lot of uh, potential in terms of you know growing online and offline for all these businesses. Well, I would like to invite Sunshine. Sunshine would be a great brand for us to learn from. Being a grocery brand in Malaysia is really, really competitive, right, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but we have really seen you guys growing really strong in the market by adopting digitalization across different verticals, you know. Yeah, Aaron, I also like your, just like you were saying about the chicken and egg theory just now. Yeah, but where, it's, where it's really important to know which business stage that you are in before identifying what's your next move, right? You cannot like really jump a few phases later and things like that, right? So I also know that you are working very closely with Marvin and the team and now at APP. So may I know, what are the challenges that you have been facing and why did you decide to adopt Omni Channel? So as I think uh, Marvin was mentioning earlier, um, one of our challenges is actually trying to get all of these um, different um, channels to come together to work as a whole. So that is one of our biggest challenge that we have so far. You know, um, is we when we started off, we we when we start off the different channels, we have separate team for each channel and all that. So right now, um, we are trying to bring everything together. So, so that, is, that is the biggest challenge that we have trying to, to, to connect, let's say, offline to our online store. Uh, I think um, like one app offers like the CRM and also uh, mobile um, functionality and all that. So yes, uh, our challenge is to try to get all these multi-channels together. Yeah. Right, right. I think... Uh, I would say online and offline operations are being run independently. I think a lot of businesses yes. out there is like, you know, online if we have a team, offline we have another team. Basically, yes. it's very hard for them to you know communicate with each other. But I think in true, fact, true. it's really important to actually consolidate all this online and offline together. And I also yeah. realized that one of the challenges that you shared earlier uh, during the session is that you remember the inventory, like run of yeah. pastas and you know, you have, how do you manage all your inventory across online and offline? I think that would be also one of the key concerns of all the, you know, retail businesses, or online businesses that we have here with us today, right? And um, uh, yeah, uh, what would be your solution? I mean, why did you choose to adopt it? For example, you feel that uh, it would be a good way to actually consolidate all this data and would it be beneficial to your brand in the long run? Uh, you are referring to the inventory or um, both inventory and the offline and offline integration? Uh, we, yeah, it, it, we, if we start off with inventory, it depends on where, um, for those who are listening, it depends on where you are at in terms of volume uh, for your business. Of course, having inventory, you would not have a issue with uh, out of stock issues because, um, for example, if you are in a market, Marketplace, you will get penalty if you let's say you do not um, keep a certain amount of uh, products available, and you constantly have a lot of out of stock issues. You you'll be penalized penalized for that. Uh, but of course, one of the biggest challenges is also keeping an inventory, holding the stock, or finding uh, space to to keep stock is also a big a very big challenge for you. So um, in any business, data, data, data is also mm. very important. So um, if, um, and also the direction of the company, if your direction of the company is to grow, um, so sales volume is a, um, a main priority, then inventory would be a best choice for you to go ahead. Um, but if you are still um, more of a traditional approach where you are doing incremental basis, a minimum inventory will be needed. So like, uh, I think this is uh, practice a lot in, um, I think China is that they use this kind of um, uh, multi -inven uh, multi box inventory system mm. where you can put multiple items into one box. So you will hold, let's say, it's a uh, one item, only three SK uh, quantity. So that would 
save your inventory space as much as possible. This is one of the solutions that we uh, we are using at the moment. Yeah. Right, right. That's very cool. So, but I data think... is very important. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. Uh, data is important and then how do you use all this data to improve all the customer's experience, you know, I don't want, I do not want it to be like, you know, I see it online, it's available, but in fact, then you don't enough, have stock. Yeah, I don't have the stock. You know, so this is one of the, uh, you know, one of the things that you will be make, you'll make customers to feel frustrated, you know. So I think, yeah, Omnichannel is basically basic, able to integrate online and offline together, which including all this inventory can be well managed. All right, I think similar to Sunshine, Headipot has been practicing new retail, where Jeff has been consistently improving its Omnichannel experiences by merging online and offline together. Well, Jeff, being a brand which has been in the market for 15 years and still going strong, Jeff, can you share with us you know, as well the challenges that you face and how do you overcome all these challenges? Okay, hi. Uh, yeah, to, uh, what, be, before I, I mentioned about the challenges, actually, mm. for me, I want to say that uh, my, from my definition, understanding Omnichannel, Okay, for me as a hair and scalp care product solution provider, uh, retailers, then Omnichannel is about to meet us and serve our customers online, offline uh, channels seamlessly to fulfill their needs and demand and make them satisfied, happy, and definitely come back for their repeat purchase. This is what the what actually the objective that we want to do uh, online, offline uh, together. So for me, uh, as we actually previously, we are not really focused on uh, online, but of course, since the pandemic start, then we already catch up and having a, quite a, a positive result. So for me, but still a lot of challenges. So just I'm very totally agree with Aaron uh, talk about the inventory. So the one also the issue when we, when we do, when our channel is fragmented. So this is the first uh, challenges that fragmented online, offline platform. So we have a different difference uh, uh, channels to sell our products, uh, to to create to generate the revenue, but we cannot have the way. I mean, how is it? You cannot have a base to 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 combine all these inventory uh, numbers, everything. So we are very hard to uh, manage the inventory. So sometimes this channel when we are sold out, but the other channel still live to sell this product. So this is the things that when we uh, when we realize the order is coming in, then say, oh my goodness, my inventory actually already out of stock. So how to, uh, how, what, what to do? This is the things that actually we, uh, as a retailers, we, when we want to always make our customer happy and satisfied, this is the main challenges that uh, I totally agree about uh, uh, from Aaron. So uh, the other way around, actually, uh, for me, I will mention that I'm mean, more, more highlight on data because um, as we know today, uh, we have, we so-called, if we do not have a, a platform like a system that to integrate all the different channels to pull all these uh, database under one, 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 one way, um, how to say, one place, uh, there is a problem that actually we cannot call ourselves omni-channels uh, retailers. We can only call ourselves multi-channel. So we have many channels, like we have our own website, we have outlets, we have marketplace, we have social media. So everywhere we have a different, different users group or fans group or even a membership or members or something like that. So that is the problem that how can we manage and optimize and maximize the values uh, uh, to have to be able to communicate with them uh, uh, how is it uh, efficiently and some things that we can uh, we can study the behavior to provide them the notification which is useful to them and uh, and really personalize it instead of uh, uh, just when you have a promotion brand A, then you brush to 10,000, 20,000 users. But actually those people, maybe only 5% of them from them is actually buy the A products, is interested about A products, but the 95% actually is totally no idea what actually the product is. So this is the way that uh, uh, when, if we can have a, a seamless, uh, uh, providing a seamless, uh, uh, behave, um, how to say the shopping experience for our customers they definitely will be make them more happy and 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 more loyalty to come back to us mm. otherwise they will go away because if they buy once a uh, brand a then you always send them brand b brand c promotion but actually it's nothing it's, it's meaningless to them right so it's first thing uh, that is one thing so one thing is another thing is like manpower as we are the, are the traditional retailers and we have uh, operation operating the brick and mortar store for more than 15 years Actually, most of the manpower and human resources actually more focused on uh, offline. So run about the details, everything, the daily operations. But but when we go 
course, when we want to expand online, we 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 initially we have no idea what what kind of a manpower actually we have, we have to recruit to to help us to 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 make our online customer happy. So this is the first. This is one things that uh, so. Uh, but when we're getting more and more uh, familiar with this online business, then we realize that um, online business is more about more about customer satisfaction. So uh, initially, the first stage. If you guys is just start your online business, I think you have to put a lot of efforts on customer service. How to make our customers, especially communicate with them. We are very hard when we want to communicate with them 24 hours. But sometimes you may you have to even uh, talk a uh, chat with them till at least until 12 uh, a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Okay, sometimes, uh, or if you have a double eleven, all these sales, then you may chat with them until answer them, reply them. I think until maybe two a.m. to three a.m. So this is the this is the totally different ball game that actually is compared compared with the physical store operations and the, and the and traditional way of retails. Yeah. So in it, now, of course, I'm still explore the, the opportunity to work with a ninety one app. So actually, the, I they can pro, I can see that they can provide us a a place that to group all these data together and then fully utilize and, and maximize the value to help us to make our customers to provide them a very good uh, platform to make a purchase online and offline. Mm, yeah, very is, uh, yep. Yep, I think I think you had a few very good points. For example, the first one that you were mentioning, you know, online and offline is being fragmented. All the day. second would be all the data would be like everywhere. You know, I believe some of our audiences here or participants here basically they gather all this data on their online and offline, but perhaps has yet to utilize all this data effectively. But you know, when you have all this data, basically these are all the asset that every brand should you know. Uh, harvest and then harness basically to use them wisely yeah and then also one more, one more thing that you were mentioning is that the manpower you know the talent the manpower that you have to allocate for all these omni channel online and offline so it has been really hard to find the right talent for the right place but i think no worries i think with now one app basically they have the really the, the right formula you know they have the right system they know what and how to do it effectively. So if, if any of our participants are actually really interested, you know, you can actually reach out to Wai Hong and any of our us to actually know more about 91 app right? So Jeff was talking about system just now, and then I think we are really glad to have one of the most established cloud post system providers with us today. Welcome, Bun Sheng. Hi, Bun Sheng. Hi, 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 son. hi. I understand that Zilnex has been working very closely with 91 app as well in providing businesses a more integrated yep. omni-channel solution. Can you share with us how can Cloud Post be able to facilitate the whole omni-channel solution? Because I believe most of the retail uh, participants most of the participants who have a retail business with us today would have a post system. So what would be your, uh, how can this post system be able to actually help in facilitating the omni-channel solution? I, I think we have actually foreseen that, you know, the days will actually be here, that the online and offline will actually be merging to actually go together. Uh, a lot of people saying that the online will replace offline or offline will not be there. Uh, we don't think that will happen because people will still be wanted to have that physical experience, you know. Mm. I still want to be able to interact with people. I still love recommendation from promoters and things like that. So that is where we see that we actually house a very important components in actually binding the online and offline uh, mechanic, all right? We have actually seen this coming along a couple of years ago where we actually highly invested in our APIs. Uh, mm. We now have a full flash APIs where we are able to talk with uh, people's like 90, 91 app uh, in a very seamless environment, how we can actually deliver uh, the physical and the online together in a very seamless environment. So that is what we are actually uh, working on. And uh, in fact, we do foresee that once we actually have this portion uh, put together, uh, like what Jeff, uh, which is a very seasoned retailer, uh, very experienced, uh, what he mentioned is right. How can we make the online customer happy? But from, the, from our perspective is we don't actually separate online or offline customer anymore is how we deliver and make our customer happy uh, wherever they come from, whether it come from marketplaces, it come from our mobile, it come from our retail. We wanted to have a seamless environment to give them the same 
uh, promotions to trade them uh, uh, in the same way, as well as how we reward them and how we actually mine the data and how frequent they come back. So that is how we look at the whole thing together. So that will be the future, you know, you know where exactly your customers are and then you know how to tackle them into different channels. For example, if I'm a person who are purchasing online, then you know my behavior, what's my spending across online and offline. I think Zunix has a, a very strong point where Zunix has been really, has been in the market for really long and it's very strong at offline data. While 91 app is really strong at online data, I think this is where the synergy comes, you know. Online and offline are merging all these data together. Not some you say one plus one is equal to two, but I think now one plus one is basically more than two because you know how do you add, on, add value to all this data. And also, um, in terms of, uh, Jeff, you were sharing just now, I think, I think one of the uh, questions that people will have, you know, there must, there must be a lot of technical challenges, you know, in terms of merging all these systems together in creating a comprehensive omnichannel experience. But what would be your um, uh, you know, uh, thoughts about this, you know, how to overcome all these technical challenges? Like the uh, one on my side? API. Uh, uh, yeah, Jeff and uh, it's an open discussion. It's an open discussion. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'm, uh, I know, I know Bonui for more than 10 years. Actually, I'm using Zilnet for more than 10 years. I'm wow. very happy with this system. Yeah, because it's the first crowd technology uh, post system in Malaysia. So those times then, as we want to change and want to grow our business, then first come to my mind that Zilnet is totally my choice. And and for after using for 10 years, then I, I'm really happy that I make the decision to change to Zilnet. So yeah, and some and from that, since then, actually we already can see that uh, Zunex is very uh, uh, open and happy to work with all this uh, new technology together. Then they all make it uh, the whole, whole system, uh, how to say, the retail line of uh, eco uh, system, pro uh, system service provider. Then we can have all these uh, things that work together, make us, make our business more easier to mm. in operating both online and offline. Otherwise, some because if because uh those those time then when I use the old version of this whole system which is not cloud based and and even though uh, they are not that open they do want to uh, upgrade and and work to with others uh, then it's very hard for us as we want as a retailer we want to grow then if your system cannot support cannot back up and do uh help us everything then we are very hard to grow us I mean grow ourselves to uh, become. Uh, online to offline, OMO or O2O, either way. But if you are, do not have the system help you, I, can't, I don't think you can do it in, mm. in, in, in future. Or, uh, so this is the thing that, uh, yeah. So I really appreciate that uh, Zilnex uh, helped us so far to and see we grow together uh, along the 10 years. <laughs> yeah, wow. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeff, for the time. <laughs> <laughs> there, are more, there are more 10 years to go, <laughs> that kind of things, you know. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. yeah. And, and then also I have heard this word very frequently across, you know, Bunxing, Aaron, Marvin, and Jeff is that the API. I think one of the things is that how do we make all these uh, systems to talk to each other? Because now I think one of the challenges that people always face is that, you know, I have online and offline. I have all these different systems that's in place, but how can I make all these things to talk to each other, which I think it's no, not, don't worry about it because I, Bunxing from Zilnex and Marvin from 91 app has all the API ready and the system basically API friendly. I think Aaron and uh, Jeff has been really adopting all this omni-channel by working with 91 app. So uh, it, it sounds technical, but it's not, I think it's, there's a formula that it can be done. So, wow, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, I think also, I think, uh, um, you guys mentioned about data. I think data is king, right? But if you do not know how to utilize them, data will be just a series of numbers and you know your contacts or your email address. So it's really, really important to actually utilize them. So how about you, Marvin? I think these are the challenges that shared by Sunshine and Hair Depot, right? Together with Zilnex, who is playing a really important role in the whole omnichannel solution. How mm -hmm. can I, one APP, help businesses to become more competitive in long oh. run? Okay, I, I would not say we, Taiwan APP, can help everything. This, this is more sound like, actually, uh, Zenex is really good at the, uh, at, at the post legacy, mm. uh, and now they are upgrading to the cloud. So uh, I think uh, businesses have to upgrade themselves. So previously, it's more like we go for offline, we talk for offline for decades. But now, actually, the consumer behavior is changing. 
So what we what nine one ADD is strong at is a uh, is an e-com area, it's an online area. So it's more like collaborating with partners like uh, our our Sunshine Aaron, Jeff, as well as our partner with uh, Zilnex. We collaborating with like we use uh, ninety one app stack on top of maybe you can say like stack on top of the current existing uh, legacy system to make the whole. Uh, consumer experience as well as data synchronized so what you've heard about those a lot of apis is actually we are talking to each other it's more like a, you can think of an iot each of the thing is uh, uh channels for instance then you wanted to make it to multi uh, only channels you have to connect them together so now it's more like we are happy to work with like Zilnex on uh, maybe in a, a future for a couple of projects. Actually, we wanted to see how we can help uh, merchants actually to bind all this data together and help them to upgrade the system as well as for merchants to create more seamless user experience, customer experience service for the client, for the customers. So I think this is, uh, this is something that we are collaborating uh, now. So I think this is also a train that will going to be happen. So I would suggest strongly every time when I talk to our merchant, it's like making the data together is not a train anymore. You <laughs> must do it, right? You must do it. But thinking how to improve it is a, is a second thing, how you manage it to create your, your synergy after that. But the data connecting is a must. If not, nothing gonna be happening we just talk talk <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah which so. Aaron and Jeff are really actively working on it right yeah yeah so uh I have a question to the floor yeah after hearing half of the discussion that we had right what do you feel you know um you can just type one if you feel that you are you know really interested and ready to go into omnichannel or you can type two if you feel that you know you have to actually you know um make, make sure that you are your e-commerce and your retail are being settled properly first before you move forward which stage that you think that you are in one would be you are ready uh, to go into omnichannel merging online and offline together two would be you know you have to work harder in terms of the online and offline management and then you know uh, omnichannel will be the next things that's moving forward yeah so so yeah Hmm. I have C2, two, two. Hmm. Yes, Brandon. Okay, Brandon. Okay, I understand that Brand okay, one of the panelists, Brandon, uh, he has a retail business. So he has yet to have a website. So uh, based on, okay, it's an open discussion. Uh, from your point of view, how can Brandon basically you want know, to move on to Omnichannel? Perhaps um, Aaron, Aaron, maybe you can actually uh, give your opinion as a, as, as a brand who is a bit on retail. It depends on what he's selling. So if he's selling like um, very focused items, like for example, we had a meeting with a uh, supplier who focuses on selling coffee uh, products, then yes, um, the first step um, would be actually to have a website itself. So your customers will be able to visit your website or let's say your Facebook to look up on your products itself. and. Your website will also serve as a really good place to sell your products. Also, because if let's say you are selling at marketplace or any of the different platforms, um, they do come with their hidden charges as well. There will come a point where you know, in if you sell on marketplace, you're going to have substantial um, costs. Um, you know, so it's good to start. Um, with your website first or and then um, slowly grow as you go. Mm, thanks, thanks, Aaron. Brandon was saying that he's selling tiles. He's selling selling tiles. tiles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if if you are doing in bulk basis, then yes, it definitely makes sense um, to have a website itself. Especially tiles, people don't just buy one tile, they'll buy um in bulk depending on their size of their you know project. Uh, I believe you will have corporate clients and um, consumer groups as well. So if let's say you are more tar you already have your corporate um, customers already all settled, then you are trying to focus on let's say your daily customers like a, a one-time customer like doing a house project, then um, you also need to think of how you want to create your website um, targeting that customer group itself. 
Um, actually, there's nothing wrong to put your items in uh, marketplace, especially with tiles, because a lot of people these days, they just go and search. And then uh, marketplace is a really good place for you to put their, uh, your products there because they will also do a lot of marketing and, and uh, metadata uh, with Google to, to get your product out there. Mm. So it's a really good place for them to try out things like that. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. And Thanks, if you everyone. have a website, then you can work um, I think there's a new technology. This is more than omni-channel already. Um, actually working with uh, different AR to understand what, how big is your size of your mm. place. Um, so if let's say your, your area is a certain size, then how much tiles will you be using? Or I think this is quite commonly used in China is that they can also mm. uh, put in the AR, put that tiles that you want to buy into the house that you, what you look like. Mm, mm, mm. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, Brandon, I hope it's, uh, you find it helpful, right? I think once we have understood how does omni-channel work, I think it's time to create more value to the customers. I think eventually it's customer-centric. So based on one of the studies that we had, right, I know, uh, that we found online, acquiring a new customer can cost five times more than retaining an existing customers, right? I'd like to set this as an open discussion. But as we can actually hear from, you know, uh, Unxing, Aaron, Jeff, or Marvin, you know, uh, a lot of businesses are you know, merely focusing on sales, you know, and have yet to really utilize all the data they have collected. So as a retailer, as a post system provider, as a 918 ATP, as an omni-channel service provider, how do you think it's really important to, um, how can they collect and how important for them to, how can they improve the customer retention rate? Yeah. Maybe start with winching first. I think from the post uh, point of sales perspective, the important is, I, I don't really use the word uh, retain, but Ooh. I would actually use the word how we actually re-engage our customers. All right. Mm. The important is how do we actually go back to the customer? I mean, the, the main idea is that we doesn't want to keep pushing people, telling that I'm selling uh, A and every time I see you, you see I sell A. That is not the objective. The objective is that when the customer think of A, he think of you. That is more important. That is why I do agree with what Aaron has shared just now. It doesn't matter whether you are selling tiles on Lazada or Shopee, you know, marketplace or not. It doesn't matter, all right? The, the important part is engagement. The important part is letting people to know you. It's the important part is that when they talk, think of, hey, I want to buy a house, I remember you. So that is the most important part. So on our side, we actually very uh, data-centric that we always talk to our customer. How can you use data to mine as well as see how you can actually ask to re-engage. It can be Facebook marketing, it can be online, and then how you can tie it back to the offline data. So that is the most important part that we believe uh, is important. So it's customer re-engagement. Mm, that's a very good term, yeah? And that concept that we should really, really adopt, re-engagement with the existing customers and how do we make sure that, you know, they don't, they don't just become a one-time customer that walk into your store, walk into your online store and offline store, then they just let, they just go. But in fact, every customer that walk into your store will be a potential customer that is going to do a repeat Correct. purchase, right? Correct. Correct. How about Aaron, Jeff, or Marvin? About customer retention this part or customer re-engagement? Oh, well, 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 we actually, uh, like, for, for, we talk about the data that we connected together, right? So uh, instead of uh, by uh, 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 saying how, how we use it, maybe, like, I explain a couple of examples that how we, how we can rely on this connected data together in, uh, for, for online and offline channels uh, to create some kind of, like, usage journeys that can improve for instance like uh if 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 if, if you if uh a selling uh shoes product for, for instance like there, there's a customer that's set into your store we used to have like uh, a uh, public customer wanted to try for new shoes right they, they see there, there's new brand shoes that they wanted to try out but somehow we talk uh we we, we sometimes at the retail they are facing like uh out of stock issues Right, mm -hmm. or maybe like uh, there's no there there's no certain of colors of shoes that they can they can have right now in the at the stores. So what use case that we can create is more like a, your staff retailer actually can add an order to a customer via our uh, retail assistant uh, pan panels, right? So which is like 
uh, if the customer can uh, do, if, if, if the shoes is out of stock, actually the consumer can bring, uh, the, the, the retailer can bring the consumer to online to buy the products mm. and then help them to add the product into the cart so that uh, the consumer can check out directly from, from his app. So this is more like a, from offline, how we leverage uh, the, the, the shopping experience to online with the data. Uh, the second thing is more like uh, uh, people from online, they uh, wanted to do a store pickup, for instance, right? So we can rely on certain of data, for instance, like user wish list. They probably, when users, they shop, they actually sometimes they are not deciding to buy Oh. Uh, uh, at the uh, uh, right at the time, so yeah. they maybe they will place this on a wish list. Yep. So when they visit your store, actually your retail, uh, your, your your staff, your retail staff actually can check it. Uh, oh, this member they have some uh, products mm. that are at into wish list, but so the retail staff can promote something to uh, to this customer while they visit uh, the store. So it's it's more like online to offline experience and so offline to online experience will be merging together. So these are more like we use the data to do the merging. Without the data, it's nothing but me. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think talking about data, right? I, I believe Jeff, I had report has been in the market for 15 years. I believe you have collected really a lot of database. So based on your experience, right? Uh, how, you know, how did you collect and then what do you find um, the way that you have collected data earlier? What was the challenges and how do you think that it can be improved moving forward, that it can be served as a, you know, a good key learning for all the participants here? Yeah, actually, had a point, uh, back to, I mean, we start in uh, 2005 and then we use uh, Zunex uh, on 2011, if not, if not mistaken, then for more than 10 years. So actually, we already collect is about, if not mistaken, it's around up to date, it's about 100,000 of data. Wow. wow. If you want to analyze it, whether they are active or not, then of course it's not 100% active, but uh, at least I think it's more around 40%. 40 so, so this is, uh, previously we are actually using all uh, different, different uh, kind of tools that actually we do to communicate with our customers, uh, to the, our members, like SMS, uh, like WhatsApp, uh, but for me, as a retailer, I will think that it is too costly. And some more, there is a way that uh, if we are, just not mentioned, we broadcast uh, one message to everyone. Of course, sometimes like anniversary promo or every anniversary uh, celebrations, of course, this news that is, is suitable to send to all the members. But sometimes, just not mentioned, some different, different uh, promo or different message may not need to broadcast it to every single members at the same time. Mm. So this is that uh, I think that is a, some 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 expenses actually is really really uh, cannot get back any value from there. Mm. So the so, uh, so today is if we have a solution that uh, we can really apply all these uh, uh, how to say we can we can make it the message is more personalized and uh, more with some call, so called custom made. Mm. Uh, and more focused to send this the uh, right message to the right target. Uh, so this is the way that we already can do it uh, by uh, uh, support by all these uh, advanced system. Yeah. Yep. Truly agree. Imagine that um, someone is going to send to me, you know, a kid product while I'm just a you know a young working adults, young male working adults. So it's not relevant. So how do you make all this promotion and? and uh, information relevant to the customers, it will be really the key. That will be more personalized and customized because you will feel more attached to the brand. That's really important. And I understand that Sunshine is also running membership program, correct, Aaron? Yeah. That's correct. How, yeah, how, how is the performance and how, how, how do you think that it will be beneficial to, to your brand or to any other retailers out there? Um. As, as uh, Marvin was talking, it's all about data. And for us, um, for example, for us, we are also moving to trying to move towards the omnichannel um, direction, which is not an easy process. Um, uh, one of the key ways to enter to this, to merge all this kind of um, data is actually through um, uh, an app. 
uh, mobile app because most of our uh, the data just shows that people are all using mobile apps now. So um, what that's one of the key uh, areas that we can try to get in. Um, either the solution can go through 91 app or um, some other people may find that, okay, let's say uh, 91 app is not okay for them. They can also look at creating their own app. So the app is very useful to to just um, connect to the customers directly. So for us, we are, we are planning that, okay, our app will only target those people um, location-based because Sunshine, we do have uh, multiple outlets and sometimes different outlets will have different promotions and all that. And then we use um, the data that we have for our customers because when our customers purchase anything, their purchase data will be already with us already. So we will know that, okay, uh, they are at this location. Uh, we will send them a notification. Okay, what are the kind of promotions they have for, let's say, the supermarket area? I, but I don't think we are there yet where we can tell. I like we are not so junky <laughs> like uh, ninety one app that they can you know check their wish list you know or what they have selected. I don't think uh, we are there yet in terms of um um targeting that specifically. But in general. Uh, we have the data like, okay, where do they go shopping uh, most frequently yeah. shop at? So then our email blasting, our app notification will be more uh, focused uh, on that field. Yep, it's more targeted. You know, I feel that it yes. I'm really with the brand. So really? that's really yes, important. using the data to retain um, the customer itself. Yep, 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 understand. I think um, the ultimate goal of Omnichannel is not just about merging online and offline together, but how no. do we really build a larger customer base by you know having a providing a seamless um, customer experience to all, all our customers, and then eventually it will actually create a stronger brand loyalty, which makes the brand more sustainable in long run. You know, you don't just focus on the short term goal, but you focus on long term goal. So not to mention that you know nine one app has a ready system with the right formula for brands to write on immediately. So basically it saves brands resources, you know, in having expensive trials and errors, and it really helps it mitigate the risk of failure in building your own system. Because I believe some of the brands out there, they're building their own system, which is taking their time and, uh, and resources to do it. But in fact, like Marvin said, now one FPP has really ready system and you know, the formula for you to leverage, leverage on, right? So if guys, if you guys would like to actually understand more about you know, how Omnichannel is able to grow your business, feel free to drop your uh, contact or email address in the comment box. Exervice team will actually reach out to you. I think uh, also if you have any thoughts or questions, feel free to share with us uh, in the Q&A session or maybe in the uh, comment section. So before we move to the Q&A session, Aaron, Jeff, Bunxing, Marvin, would you be able to share with us a quick advice to our audiences here who have been working really hard in growing their businesses by adopting you know, omni-channel or you know, how to merge online and offline together. Um, let's start with um, Wunxing first. Uh, I, I believe the important part, of course, not just on O2O, but uh, digitalization as a whole, uh, everything needs to be drive with a uh, clear objective. So I've been talking to a lot of retailers, my work actually I think Wilshing's connection got uh got interrupted. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can go with uh Jeffers. Jeff it has a lot of opportunity to deal with a lots of retailer uh, weather from retail and FMEs. Uh is, is my line back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I think we lost you for 15 seconds. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm no I, problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, I'm just saying that the important part is it has to be objective driven. A lot of retailers what mm. they do is that they see that competitor True. has it, they want it. Uh, sometimes they see their neighbor has it, they want it, you know. But the actual fact is that uh, not every business is the same. So you really need to know what you are doing and what application you want to deploy and what services you want to offer. And mm. that is very important. And in the end of the day, it has to be data driven. Mm -hmm. It's objective right. driven and data driven. You must know That's what correct. are you. You don't blindly just follow, you know, you know yes. where you are and then you work yes. towards it. Yeah. Correct. How about um, Marvin? Oh, Big so advice. Well, yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Oi here. So that's why we have faces, uh, we, we diagnosis, and then we have faces recommended for the uh, merchants, how they step-by-step step moving forward. So uh, what, what we are more, more focusing is like, uh, for instance, like uh, what uh, uh, 
uh, Jeff just mentioned about. Uh, now we 918 DPA actually we have like a applications available. So we we usually like uh, customer can our merchants can be on board like uh, taken uh, within like three months to have their brand app as well, as well as applications ready. So uh, start from start from there. Actually, they can start building their their, their customer profile over there, like leading the customer to to the app, so that when if anything that wanted to communicate with the customer, there's no more SMS anymore because with the app you can send notifications. Mm. So it also saves cost for the for, for 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 the merchant as well. So by face by face get, and get into the uh, 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 directions how to drive uh, the traffic between offline to online and online online to offline that requires like data as well as uh, uh, whether uh, the objective that we mentioned can be done uh, by the people uh, uh, from the retail store as well. So uh, these, these are more, more like that we need to like uh, uh, discuss face by face and helping the merchants how to evolve them to our own channels. Mm. And with that, of course, that they can like gain more loyalty customers who can stick with their brand app, then as well as they can also create repeated sales I mentioned about uh, it before like Jeff, as well that you can like create more delightful uh, shopping journey, I would say, to, to your customer. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's a very good point. I think you're right. It has been done in phases, but don't worry about it, guys. If you if you uh, we can actually arrange a session with, if you're interested, Exabytes and 91 APP will be able to identify which stages are you in and then what are the things that you have to do next to actually improve your business in terms of farming channel. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeff. What's, what would be your quick advice that's, that we want to share with the team, uh, with the audiences that we have here? Yeah, I'm, I just I, I would like to I mean, agree, totally agree with Boon Singh because uh, the objective is, is, um, is very important because uh, I also saw a lot of friends that uh, as retailers that then they, when people say uh, uh, Facebook Live is good, then they go Facebook Live and this is good, they go that and this and that, this and that. But actually, what is your uh, the ultimate objective that actually you want to do online and offline together? Mm. This is free. So one thing is that, and some more the mindset is that we have to get ready ourselves is when 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 we transform to on digital, I mean, we would like to implement the digital transformations. It's not a single work or single channel that you are you are exploring when you mean that you are ready uh, online or off, uh, offline uh, uh, implementation because there, there's a, there's a, you have to restructure everything, including your, your functional departments, everything, the person in charge. So you have to look at a lot of resources and time to 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 it's some kind of a, how to say it, restart the business. Okay, you restart the, your online. You have means that like you have to restart the business. You you like the first day. Okay, when you want when you start your business at uh, your traditional way, but now if you go online, you mean that you are start start the, your business all over again. But how to merge this other? Of course, that one we need a system to help us. But uh, you have to bear in mind that it's not only uh, do um, when people come to you say this this channel good or that channel you just put uh, give put the money and then you leave your people to handle it. Everything's ID people handle everything. If if you are the boss, you are the business owner. You do not know any things. I don't think you will be successful for the transformation. You mm. have to know everything. Of course, you may not need to do everything, but you have to know at least. So, okay. So, you, if you are a business owner today, especially retailers, if you want to implement the digital transformation, you first thing first, you have to learn. And you go to learn more than your uh, colleagues or more than your staff, more, learn more than your uh, whoever in the company. You must mm. know. Otherwise, you do know whether they want efficient or not. Even if they, I give you a very powerful thing, a tools, you also may, you may at the end of the day, you may, you may also conclusion that this, this thing is not cannot help me. It's not that yeah. tools is your issue because you totally do not how to how to handle it, how to maximize the tools uh, at the end of the day. So yeah, yeah. totally cool. Good. Yeah, totally agree, Jeff. I think yes. if you don't start now, then when, you know? You have to really you know, start now and then you really get ready for it. How about you, Aaron? You know, any advice? I, I totally agree with every, everyone's point here. Mm. Because, um, for us retailers, we, you, we are handling in a way, like for example, my position, I'm handling kind of like two different parties. One is the traditional 
management group and then another part would be like for example people like 91 app and zilnex where they are they are more understanding of how the phases go for in terms of digitalization for people usually in the let's say you know management group they have already done this for a long time they are they have a, a preconception that online is like ah you do live now you're going to uh, take example if they do facebook live or well, if I do Facebook Live now, uh, immediately I should be expecting uh, 200 to 300 views. You know, that, that doesn't come um, automatically, you know. Uh, things should not be reactively, as uh, I think uh, Jeff was mentioning. Things need to be planned out. Infrastructure needs to be put out. Like, if you just spend a lot of money on doing an advertisement on Facebook and pushing your ads, but then you don't, do enough uh, infrastructure work in the back end uh, for your website or your, your inventory list, your money will be wasted. Yes, it's very easy to just put, pour more money for advertising, but if you don't work um, on phase basis, then that will be a big issue that we will face. Uh. So my advice is that one should not be reactionary. You should be actually planning your things along the way in the back end, which is easier said than done. You know? mm. it's, it's very easy to, to kind of fall into that hole that, oh, oh uh, I got another competitor doing this price. I got another competitor doing this right yep. now. So it's really hard to just kind of stick to that, that whole process because the initial uh, uh, development of that kind of like uh, infrastructure and all that will take time. You need to have a separate team to create, like, for example, um, you need to edit your photos out. Then you have to actually work with your, let's say you have a commercial team that will source all your items. I think Jeff will understand if you source your, uh, your hair products, your supplier needs to actually send you your products, uh, 3D rendering of the product, you know, all this kind of thing. You, you have to work together uh, with the commercial team, not only with uh, the programming team as well. Um, so if let's say your top management don't really understand that you have to educate, if let's say you're in a position like me, uh, you have to educate the management itself. Okay, what are the things that we need in order to grow? And you need to give them a realistic expectation of how the sales is going to look like, you know. Um, is it going to be a six months uh, project? Are we looking at one year project? And what is the goal? That those those things needs to be clearly set out. Yeah. Um, and also, you're bound to be reactionary. That one you mm. cannot you cannot do anything about that. That one you have to kind of pull it in together with your your uh, long term planning. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree. You have to really, really start to plan now. I think there's a quote that I always believe, you know, if we don't change anything that we are doing right now, we, are, we, 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 are, we don't expect any changes in terms of the outcome. So it's really, really good to start to make changes in order to, you know, um, change your outcome. So things wouldn't be just like taking for things for granted or it would be just, you know, uh, happens by itself. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. I think I have, uh, there's a questions over here from... Uh, Kian Wong, um, the saying, okay, um, I'm just um, uh, reading it out, yeah. The saying, winner, winner takes all, uh, best number one, leave no place for number two. What's the strategy, you guys can actually look at the Q&A uh, uh, point uh, buttons over there, yeah. What's the strategy to keep hitting number one giant if we are all number two? Wait, look uh, at Grab. Vincent, yeah, you yes. have to look at the open questions. Open questions. Okay, do you want to take over here, Laurie? <laughs> sure, no problem. Let me just come on screen for you guys. All right, here we go. So this one is from Ken Wong. So the question is, I need to know if selling service online is worth investing. Uh, I've been receiving all these e-coaching, e-teaching, and it seems like a lucrative business uh, when one deal many, with many clients versus one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm not too sure if I understand that, but let me just continue with that. Uh, FYI, my industry, which is interior design services, I've no clue whether it's workable or just as any other channel, but my core business still remains as, a, remains as offline. Uh, or wait till product slash goods market is matured, then service on 101 is, is the time. Okay, I'm not too sure if I understand this. Maybe if someone could just get the gist of that from the panel here, do, do any of you actually uh, pull, you know, 
I think I understand his question. Yeah. I think. Um, it's a bit ad hoc, but yeah. Yeah. It's actually the, the market is ready right now for for you know uh, online services for interior design services. You technically don't need to be present at the location. Um uh, I think recently in Facebook itself you can see a lot of people start um, advertising their services in terms of interior design. Um, they use Facebook and Instagram to kind of advertise uh, their services out and show their projects in terms of both video and you know in 2D uh, photos as well as in, in kind of a uh, virtual reality kind of a 3D rendering of their, their business. So um, I, I totally think this is the time to do it, you know, especially with the COVID rules and all that people are, are tend to not want to meet face to face as much. So I, I think you should start it. And um, if you don't start it now, it, when it's ready that time, you know, again, as I, I mentioned, again, we should not be reactionary. You should, you know, work towards um, being prepared. You know, you can work on one thing at a time. So. Um, if you are totally offline right now, the first thing you should be doing is that to create content um, in your website itself. You're not necessarily selling anything, but creating content so that when you are ready to sell your services that time, you already have a content and already have a customer database that will be able to see and sell it to. So if, if you just with zero content and just drop it in, you're going to take a lot of time uh, and and cost to just get the customer base in, yeah. Okay, thank uh, you for that. I think this hopefully <laughs> answers Ken Wong's uh, question. Yeah, I, I think like when you read it a little bit slower and try to piece it together, it sort of makes sense that way. Uh, so thank you, Aaron, for answering that. Now this next one just came in from Daniel. So Daniel's session is a bit ad hoc as well, but uh, Daniel's question is: Is it to start a, is it to start a business online first? You know, you guys, when you type in your questions, we appreciate it if you can make it as detailed as possible. That really helps us understand your perspective a little bit better. So, Daniel, maybe you would like to just go ahead and just, you know, uh, elaborate a little bit more because uh, I think most of us are a little bit lost with, uh, with you know, uh, what you have sent in here. Um, but, yeah, let's just give him a little bit of time and see if he does respond. Um, by the way, I would like to actually address to one of the comments from Alan just now. Having a website is one thing. Getting people to know how to go there is entirely different, which I totally agree with that. You know, you are setting a house. A website will be your online house or online stores. But if you are not promoting it and not getting people to go over it, it will be still just a house over there, you know. So it's really important to actually having a digital marketing and having, um, you know, uh, how do we leverage on online to, or off, uh, offline to actually drive people to go to online? So these are, there are many, many ways where you can drive people to go to online. So yes, website itself is not, not going to, just a house, but you have to basically see how do you drive people to go to your house or go to your stores. You know? Yeah, that would be my comment uh, on Alan's feedback. Yeah. I, think that's I, very I, I have advice. a feeling, oh, I have a feeling that this Daniel one, I think the question might be, is it easier to start business online first um well, i think it just depends on what you see selling um, I mean, yeah well, i, I yeah, think for, it's quite common these days that um they are quite common these days that there are people that start their business online first so their challenge is like whether do they need to extend their multi-channel to offline basis and their touch points there i think this this is one of the newer challenges that are popping up in different industries right now. Oh, uh, okay. So he actually elaborated. So then I said, sorry, I accidentally pressed send. <laughs> I would like to ask, is it advisable to start a business online first, then uh, having an offline business oh. first, and then convert it to online? Well, actually, from my point of view, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm already. So uh, online is a good place for you to test out uh, your product, uh, 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 whether uh, the market fits or not. Is is a super cheap. You don't need to uh, open a store what whatsoever. You just need a, a place, for instance, like marketplace, to test out your your product. So whether or not uh, go to uh, business online first, then to offline, it depends. There is no uh, correct answer in this area. So it depends on what product you're going to sell. 
and what stage you are in, and then how you going to uh, 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 test it out uh, uh, to the market. So yeah, I hope hope, hope this question uh, replies to that. Yeah. I yeah. think to add on to that, I think it also depends on the resources that the business has. Right, uh, right, Of right. course, you know, exactly. online will be uh, less costly than doing offline. So, so yeah, that would be one of the key concerns that uh, okay. Daniel you can consider. Yeah. All right, Daniel says thank you. So I think we're going to wrap things up with just one last question here before we adjourn for lunch. So this one comes from Rachel. Rachel's question is, Hi, what is your advice for a very small business in using apps? How to evaluate as to when a business meets its own app. Thanks. I personally think that you, you do not really need an app um, if you are a very small business. Uh, if you have, um, you may need an app, if, let's say you have multiple um, um, shops. If you have more than at least three to four shops, um, uh, then there's possibility that you need uh, you can consider having an app. Otherwise, I, I don't think um, it, it's, it's really that you need it, you know, because for me, like I, for a consumer myself, I don't like to download so many apps, you know, I just rather to have this one app and then I just handle everything in there. So you can also take, um, if you are a business in, you know, um, in a supermarket or a mall, you can actually take advantage of their own omni-channel app they will already have. So um, if you look at Bangkok or Paragon, they will have that, yeah, their own uh, app in the mall itself that which you can tag along, you know, that will save you a lot of cost. But if you, let's say, you are not a B2C kind of business, uh, you're more B2B, then I don't think you really need an app. You should have a very strong mobile website or a website uh, presence um, so that customers can use. So an app is not really necessary unless um, you already have multiple outlets and depends on what you are selling. So if let's say um, like Jeff like that, I think he has uh, a lot of um, different, different products and different, different outlets, then an app would be very useful. All right, that's very good advice. Would anyone else like to add on before we wrap things up? For my, uh, mm. for my snap, uh, opinion, I will say that if you, uh, first things, I would like to know how, how small the business are. If your business is very, very small, just beginning, like my daughter actually just started her business about selling a cake, okay, home baking cake uh, for, I think, I think it's the first way, uh, my first stage would be like, you you have to go where is the having a already ready traffic for you to 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 let people know about you so i think facebook maybe the social media channels is the first thing first way a uh, first platform that for you to to explore yourself to to let people know about you but of course in the long run uh second phase when you're getting more and more uh fans or more and more uh, client members or clients then yeah of course you will come to meet a easy uh meet a web page Maybe you can get from Easy Store, then you create your own web page. And then because you have to put a lot of your contents your inside to let them have the overall idea. Because last, as, you, as we know that social media, sometimes when you're getting a timeline, it's very far away. You're very hard to get back uh, all the media or something like that. So I think if you have Easy Store, you can have uh, your web page, you can have a very uh, organized uh, contents uh, page or something like that to let your customers know about it, know more about you. So it's the first thing. So in the long in the long run, when when we getting getting more and more customers and, and um, then you only think about the app because app is the is at the second phase or third phase to to to, to consider because app the investment is quite uh, is it's compared as compared with the website will be a slightly bigger, uh, but so when you want, come to having an app, you must have the objective why you need the app, how the app can pro create value or or. Uh, provide more value for your customers because at the end of the day no matter what kind of omni channel multi channel what kind of channel whatever you mentioned the first thing that if your customer not customer you're not happy with that i don't whatever you do is it, meaningless why why as a retailer want to join it uh, want to apply this uh, omni channel multi channel what the channel uh, what but at the main the main purpose is what the main purpose the main objective actually 
just make your customer happy and, and fulfill their demands and, and make them easier, convenient to get either product or service that actually they are looking for. They, they, right. they, 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 that's all. Otherwise, if you if you think about if you if you stand in the, from the point of view of from the perspective of a business owner, you see that oh, I want this, I want a customer data. I, want I think that customer will know at the end of the day they will they will jabut also lah. So I think <laughs> so better understand your customer what they want, what you what kind of value and service that you can provide. Then you only can finalize and understand what kind of tools that actually you need to mm -hmm. to your customer stick to you as long as possible okay yeah, yeah. i i from my one uh, app project director i totally agree with uh, jeff and Aaron as well yeah so it really depends on uh, on, on that uh, we we also have some kind of like uh, merchants uh, who, who is only doing online that they sell clothes from like Korean, they import clothing or stuff, but they already building a, 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 a tremendous uh, customer data. So that they, then they reach out to us to open up the app, uh, applications. At the beginning, actually a website actually is far away to sufficient to serve their client. Already. So you don't have to think about the app at the, at, at the very beginning. So, so this is even from, my perspective <laughs> from now on, I, I, I uh, totally agree with the audience, uh, like Jeff and Aaron saying here. So, all right, you guys. So you heard it here first, and uh, thank you, Rachel, for sending in that question. Uh, we actually have one more that uh, came in later on. So if any of you would actually like to uh, answer that during lunchtime, that'd be great. But we have to wrap things up now because we have gone over time just a little bit. I'm sure everyone in the uh, audience here is absolutely starving. I know I am, but. Uh, on behalf of Exabytes and the SMA Digital Fest 2021, I would like to thank you, Winston, Bunsheng, Aaron, uh, Jeff. Thank you so much, Marvin, for being here and for all your input. This uh, panel discussion was absolutely phenomenal. So give yourselves a virtual round of applause, a job well done, you guys. And hopefully we'll see you soon for future events. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you so much. Thanks, right. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Exabytes. Grow your business online.